Welcome back to our program. We are here with TV Toastmasters. My name is Pam Mills. I'm your host tonight, and I'm here interviewing Paul Halbrick with Farmers Insurance. I'm a member of Oregon City Toastmasters, and Paul is a member of Wagon Tongues of Oregon City. Welcome, Paul, to our program tonight. We're glad to have you. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. So how are things going? You've got so many things going. You have an Oregon City business right here in Oregon City. You're a business owner. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do in Oregon City? Well, one of the things I do in Oregon City is I stop at a lot of the fast food restaurants. <laughs> now, that's but, not business. Oh, you're well, keeping the Oregon City business in business. That's right. That's okay. right. One, one taco at a time. <laughs> But what I, what I do in my day job is I, I'm an insurance agent, okay. and I've owned an agency here in Oregon City for six years. I um, have four employees, and we sell auto, home, and business insurance. All right. Now, insurance is not the best subject to talk about. Nobody likes insurance until they need it, of course. What does it look like when one of your clients needs insurance and then needs to use the insurance? What's that process look like? Well, I'm really glad you asked me that question, but I will challenge you a little bit on it not being a fun topic. In fact, <laughs> when I get on an airplane and I don't want to talk to somebody, I just let them know I'm in insurance and it's a quiet flight the whole way through. <laughs> they so don't bug you anymore. Not, not at all. It's great. <laughs> but one of the things is I, I didn't come to insurance right away in my work life. In fact, um, I had a car accident in 2006, and the claim process in that accident was pretty bad. In fact, my agent's office hardly contacted me at all or talked to me or didn't walk me through the process a bit. And I spent about three months just complaining about it, and my wife got to hear it, and she finally got sick of hearing it, and she said, why don't you do something about it? Why don't you start your own agency? Because nobody does insurance the way they used to. You know, your, your agents don't know your name anymore, and they, they don't know you when you come in. And what I try to do in my office is make that totally different. So we're very... I don't want to say old school, but I think we're really atypical when it comes to how we treat our customers. And if they call me with a claim, I make sure my staff puts everything down and we're going to work on that claim. So I think it's a lot different experience than what they're going to get anywhere else. So they actually get to talk to a human. They don't just call an 800 number and have to push a million buttons. No, we, we, we absolutely uh, are real human beings. Most of the time, we're real humans. That's great. Sounds yes. like you have a great team working for you. Oh, they're the best. And just a great overall business in here in Oregon City. Local. So, Paul, I hear that you are a vet. What area did you serve in? I proudly served in the United States Air Force. Now, I was proud of it. I don't know if they were proud of it. Well, thank you for your service thank for you. our country. So, where did you serve? Well, I started out in Japan, actually, for two years. I was a logistics sergeant. And what that really entailed was handing out underwear and boots and jackets. But I was the most popular person at Yokota Air Base for two years. <laughs> Airman Hallbrook, where's my underwear? Well, you know. So you were well well liked there. <laughs> Where else did you serve? That was a couple years in Japan. A couple years in Japan and two years at Ramstein Air Base in Germany. Wow! So you got around. That's what they said. Yes. So after the Air Force, what did you do with your life? You obviously got to go to college, used your GI Bill. That's right. So right after the Air Force, I enrolled in the University of Nevada and studied journalism, in fact, and graduated from there in four years and didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, so I decided to go to Japan and teach for a couple of years. And who did you teach in Japan? Well, I taught English, okay. and I taught Japanese adults, and mostly they were business owners, and they were people who were going off on vacation or traveling to other countries. The, you would be surprised the questions I would get. Any interesting stories you'd like to share with us? Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, one of the best ones that I, I remember is I had one of my students actually invite me over to his house once, and it was an afternoon lunch. And one of the things he did was he plied me with beer and rice, and it was great, great lunch. Thought everything was done until he said to me, Paul Sensei, my daughter, she wants to meet you. <laughs> and his daughter walked out of the kitchen carrying a huge stack of pancakes. She always wanted to make pancakes for someone. So I was forced to eat this big, huge stack of pancakes. <laughs> 
Well, that's quite the story. I think it's a great story. <laughs> so you went from military to college, then you went back to Japan and taught English, and then you came back to the United States. And is that when you got into insurance, or did you have another career before insurance? When I moved back to the States, I moved to Oregon and met my wife, got married, and there was about a four-year period of time where I worked for um, an apparel company. Pretty big one, but, uh, no, it's not one of the ones you're thinking about. Not it's a little, little tiny apparel company <laughs> this time. But uh, that was the point of time where I was looking around, didn't know quite what I wanted to do, and that's when the insurance thing happened. So you've just kind of transitioned to different things, trying to find out what you liked in life. Now, you've been a Toastmaster for a couple of years now, on and off a couple of different clubs, and you just recently went to the contest, right? Right. Area 65, you won first place. Right. How did that feel? Well, it's interesting because I, I feel like Toastmasters, I don't, I don't have a hard time, well, I, okay, you could beg to differ, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a difficult time getting up in front of people and, and talking. That's not something I have a problem with. And I think I felt like with Toastmasters, that's what everyone, would, that, I, since I don't have a problem with that, why would I join Toastmasters? But what I found with Toastmasters is that the meetings, the club, gives you really a good structure for how to prepare for a speech, yep. uh, how to really think about what your audience is going to be hearing. And I feel like that's helped me out, not just in giving up a presentation, but even in my business when I'm talking to a client or running a staff meeting. And so I feel like Toastmasters has been incredibly beneficial in a lot of different ways, not just standing up and giving a speech. All right. Toastmasters has a leadership track, which can also help running meetings and doing the leadership part of your business. Do you, have you gone that track yet? Have you felt like that's been a benefit for you? Well, I feel like Toastmasters has been really great in that way. I, I feel like the people who are in leadership at Toastmasters uh, pretty much are still kind of guiding me around a little bit, saying, okay, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. So I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to lead anybody, but uh, I definitely feel like Toastmasters is well worth the time, and I plan on being a Toastmaster for as long as my dues are paid. <laughs> for a few more months, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Now, do you have opportunities to do public speaking, or is that something that you would like to do? You, you did the contest, mm -hmm. you went on to the, the district, and you uh -huh. got second place. Mm -mm. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. I heard it was a great speech. I heard it a couple times, and you did a fabulous job. Do you want to do public speaking in the future? I would love to. I would love some opportunities to do public speaking. What, what kind of public speaking would you like to do? I, well, it's interesting because I feel like my story was one of empowerment. Mm -hmm. My story was one of overcoming odds. And I feel like if I can sort of craft some more stories that way and, and tell that to audiences to make them feel like, you know, anybody can do anything. I really feel that way. You know, I've got two rules in life. One of those rules is, is there's always another way to do something. And the second rule in life really is no matter what you want to do, there's always a different road, and you can take that. And I feel like that's a message I could get out to people. Now, I've heard a little bit that you like to make people laugh. I try to do my best. Yeah? yeah. So is stand-up comedy in your future? <laughs> 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 so you made me laugh. I've, tri I've tried it a few times. I've tried it a few times, and, and my cats think I'm hilarious. <laughs> So I, I give my cats a choice. My wife's not home. I give them a choice. I say, okay, do you want to hear me do karaoke or do you want to hear my stand-up? And they typically choose the karaoke. I say, yeah, karaoke. <laughs> so, yeah, I think you do have a future in comedy. Yeah, <laughs> Just get up there and sing to them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. All right, Paul, thank you for coming. If anybody wants any more information, where could we find that information? That information is available at paulhallbrook.com or uh, you can also, or on Facebook at Paul Hallbrook. And you've got your stand up com comedy video on there too, right? So we can see. No, that. no, 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 no. You got to, no, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay, not that brave. That's future. That's if there's one advice you could give to anybody, what would it be? 
don't limit yourself by your own expectations because the road is always open and there's lots of avenues that you don't even know are available. So don't limit yourself. Very good advice. Well, thank you for coming and Pleasure. it's good to get to know you a little bit more. Thank you for attending our show tonight. My name is Pam Mills. We'd like to thank Paul Halbrook for joining us tonight. And thank you again for coming. If you're interested in Toastmasters, toastmasters.org, you can find a club nearest you. I joined Toastmasters to improve my speaking, listening, communication, and leadership skills. Toastmasters gave me incredible confidence. 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 Great listening skills. Poise. Great leadership skills. Leadership skills. The ability to speak in public. Strength. A captive audience. Quality feedback from the more experienced Toastmasters. Toastmasters really helped me improve my listening skills. Sales skills. Opportunities to go to different groups and widen my whole horizon. Toastmasters has given me a better, a more focused me, and I'm a much better listener. Toastmasters is fulfilling. It's a great place to fail your way to success. Wonderful way to meet people. Networking. Strength. It's addictive. It's a club of self-improvement. It's an experience, it's a ride that you won't forget and you'll enjoy it every step of the way. Toastmasters helped me land a kick butt job. I sang at one of my table topic speeches and people liked it and applauded. My business is doing great and I'm very, very grateful to Toastmasters. It's been a great experience for me. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters, for giving me so much confidence. Thank you, Toastmasters, for everything. Good evening and welcome to TV Toastmasters. We are talking business tonight. Over the last two decades, the rise of internet and digital technologies has really changed the way we've gotten in information and changed the whole media landscape. That's why tonight, really fascinated to have with us Jolene Taylor from Pamplin Media and we're going to be talking about the future of print and the print business and advertising business. Welcome Jolene. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. So with all the changes that have been going on, why is print still relevant? Well, print is one of those things that is never going to go away. Print was around before radio, before TV. They said with each one that well, TV is going to kill radio, radio was going to kill print. We can all coexist together because they're used differently. For example, the newspapers, um, it's a local, uh, a localized thing where you can't get that news anywhere else. So your school board, your commissioners, you know, you're not going to find that news in a big national newspaper or in a magazine somewhere. Without that local newspaper, you won't know those, that information. You won't see the kids on the high school team who won for your school. You won't know about any sales in your area because there's no advertising for it except online. And online, we use it to look for information, and we are skimming constantly. When you sit down to read a paper, it's an experience. Mm. So um, you get your coffee. You relax. We tend to sit down for print. We take time because it's important. We trust local news. One of the things about um, newspapers um, in the local newspapers is that it is an actual journalist who went to school, and that is a credibility and trust issue that people have. So that's why people trust a newspaper. Um, and they're used to seeing advertisements in a newspaper, so um, advertisers understand that they need to be there. People who advertise in print and digital, they get a 300 times more conversion rate than if they do just print or just digital by themselves. Interesting. So it's actually the combination of two that matters. So when you're working with a small business and you're thinking about how to position them across all those platforms, digital, mobile, print, what are you talking, what kind of questions are you asking them to find out what works best for them? Um, well, most of it is target market because you want to make sure that they are reaching their target market. I am not going to put a funeral home into a sports page. Mm. You know, you want to make sure that a customer is putting their ads in a paper or on a digital platform in social media where their actual target market 
is because you're just wasting eyeballs otherwise. So, f for example, um, if you had a, a, a sporting goods store and you put them in regular news in, in, in the paper, they're going to get a response. But if you put them in sports, where people are reading about sports, probably have kids who are in sports, that sort of thing, they're going to get a better response. So it's all about like kind of targeting that sort of a thing. So the best thing is, so here's a little stats for you. Um, people, 69% of Americans read the newspaper. That's digital the and print or the no, stuff? that's both. That's digital okay. and print. 81% mm -hmm. of that 69 is print. 30% of the 89 reads both digital and print. Mm -hmm. So there's segments of each of those that you're only getting a print person, you're only getting a digital person, then there's the people who get both. You want to be able to inundate that person with the, your message as many times as you can because it takes 11 to 21 times in our society right now with the amount of information that we have thrown at us for us to make any sort of recognition of your advertising. Yeah, interesting. Now, you know, I, I read a lot, and it seems like now the battles or the discussion is about between desktop and mobile. Right. And I never hear about print in that conversation. So who is reading print? Who, can you give me the... Sure. Who's the demographic? You know, it's, it's quite interesting because a lot of people say, oh, millennials don't like print. It's actually not true. They mm. love print because they love to get a deal. And where are all the deals? In your print papers. Mm. You know, you, they love coupons. If they can get it a digital coupon, they'll take it. But they love print coupons, so they read a lot of our papers. Plus, as people... Um, as the political, I should say, the political scene has kind of been a bumpy road, um, millennials want to be more informed. So yes, they are looking at the news online, but they're starting to care about their communities themselves better. So there's the shootings and information that they want to be able to promote themselves and their communities, and so they're going to local news to kind of research that information. And then, of course, you know, there's coupons and mm -hmm. things to do and stuff like that. So. so so you publish the Oregon City News. Yes. So what you're telling us is that when people want to focus their attention and time on Oregon City, that's where they will go. They will go to a print journal as yes. opposed to an online portal about Oregon City. Um, well, they'll do both. You know, okay. most people, so here's an example. This uh, J.C. Penney quit printing their catalog five years ago. Mm -hmm or actually it was a little bit longer than that go. But they started to realize, and they are now printing it again, because their online sales dropped because they stopped printing. <laughs> so their online sales are back up and going because they have a print medium. People like to sit and look, and then they'll go online. So um, I believe it is 49% of online purchases were made because somebody saw it in a print medium. So. so they start at print and then they go to digital when they're ready to buy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we work, of course, naturally with a lot of businesses, the small businesses, who have limited marketing and advertising budgets. Absolutely. And they're always asked the question, you know, I've got so many options, right. so many options of where to put these advertising dollars. Right. Um, what is it about print? I mean, what are the trends? Like, I, let me ask. What are the trends in advertising that we should be alert to? What's coming over the horizon? Um, well, I think one of the biggest things that has become really big and is growing. So right now, about 56% of advertising um, that works is called native advertising. It's when you brand in yourself as an expert or you have an expert talking about your product. Um, and so it's, it's interactive. You want to touch on an emotional point. You're either going to try to make somebody happy, you want to make them sad, or you want to inform them. But in all of those things, you want to make them move to do what it is that you want them to do, whether it's buy something, go write a letter for this issue, you know, whatever that is. Um, it's about touching those emotional bullet points and then getting them to do the thing that you want them to do. And advertorial is 
huge for that. Advertorial. Now, you just used that word. Please yes. explain to us what that is. Advertorial is essentially the same thing. It's being having what looks like an article or an expert talking about your product in, in more of um, when it looks like an article. It is an article about your, your information. People want information, but they also want to be engaged in that information. So it can't be just, you know, this is my product. It's blue. It goes fast. It has four wheels. Mm. You should buy it. <laughs> you know, no, it's a... This car is going to make you feel great. The wind is in your hair, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the wind in my hair. <laughs> right? Oh, great. <laughs> what kind of car do you have? Yeah. Some of your. Oh, uh, no. Well, as a, <laughs> mine is not a wind in your hair car. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> got it. So, yeah. so, so, so a question along that line. You're talking about the advertorial and being able to touch people's emotions. Right. One of the things we talk about in Toastmasters and, and within all speakers is the ability to be seen as a thought leader. Right. And then be a storyteller. Exactly. So do you work with people on helping that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of times people get into business because they don't, they, they love to do what it is they do in their business, but mm -hmm. they don't know how to market themselves. Mm -hmm. And so part of my job is to help them do that, to craft that message. When um, somebody gets and wants to do advertising, whether it's digital or print, we have a whole staff of graphic designers on staff who can help design all the ads and put all of that together and, you know, write the articles, all of that. So it's out of their hands and f mm -hmm. feeling overwhelmed by, oh my gosh, how am I going to put this all together? No, we can help you with that whole marketing message mm -hmm. um, so that you're, it's one less thing on your plate. Because as a small business owner, you have so many things you are, are ha have on so many hats that it can be really overwhelming. Mm. Yeah, and that's something constantly talked about in small or any business. Stick to your core strengths, right. outsource the rest. Exactly. So you're, if I'm hearing this right, you love to work as a partner Absolutely. with the business, almost being like their marketing department exactly. within their small business. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so can you tell me a little bit, um, give me one example of an organization that you have helped elevate their profile and help generate even more revenue? Um, well, <laughs> there's so many. Um, I'm just trying to think of one of the best ones. Um, give us one of the worst ones. I don't, you know, give us one. <laughs> just give us one. So, um, I think, uh, for example, I, I, I probably can't use the name of the company, mm -hmm, okay. um, but uh, they started out. They were a fairly well-known company. People would know who they were, um, but their sales were kind of slacking. And so what we did is we put together a campaign where we did digital, print, and social media. And we were able to track all of those things. So with digital, you can track how many people clicked, mm -hmm. how many impressions. In print, we were able to put together um, you know, phone numbers and offers that they could track through that. And together, that it just elevated um, their response to the fact that now they are doing double the amount of advertising that we had started with because they had got such a good response from it. So, okay. right. yeah. Right. So where can people go if they want to find out more information about you? Um, well, we are online um, mm -hmm. at the Oregon City News um, as well, or Pamplin Media Group, depending on how you want to look mm -hmm. for me. Um, and then, of course, um, you can email me at jtaylor at pamplinmedia.com. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. you know, we always talk about the ability for organizations or companies to be able to tell your story and make a difference in, you know, raising your profile, raising your profits, raising your Absolutely. revenue. So I want to thank Jolene for joining us today. Uh, once again, I am Michael Brand, and this, we've been talking business. So once again, looking at advertising, looking at how you can take your organization a little higher. Um, so let's get out there and let's get to work.
I joined Toastmasters to improve my speaking, listening, communication, and leadership skills. Toastmasters gave me incredible confidence. 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 Great listening skills. Poise. Great leadership skills. Leadership skills. The ability to speak in public. Strength. A captive audience. Quality feedback from the more experienced Toastmasters. Toastmasters really helped me improve my listening skills. Sales skills. Opportunities to go to different groups and widen my whole horizon. Toastmasters has given me a better, a more focused me, and I'm a much better listener. Toastmasters is fulfilling. It's a great place to fail your way to success. Wonderful way to meet people. Networking. Strength. It's addictive. It's a club of self-improvement. It's an experience, it's a ride that you won't forget and you'll enjoy it every step of the way. Toastmasters helped me land a kick butt job. I sang at one of my table topic speeches and people liked it and applauded. it. My business is doing great and I'm very, very grateful to Toastmasters. It's been a great experience for me. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters, for giving me so much confidence. Thank you, Toastmasters, for everything.